Today's video is brought to you by Wonder, the AI art app that will bring forth your most crazy ideas. Hello and welcome to The Broken Sword, your YouTube home for The Lord of the Rings and all things J.R.R. Tolkien. In today's video, we are looking at the true power of Galadriel. Galadriel's character has been one of great contention in recent months with her appearance in the Rings of Power show, drawing a number of criticisms. Not so much for the actress Morvith Clark, but rather for the characterization of Galadriel. What we will consider are the criticisms, look at what the text has to say and what we might make of publications that give us information that could change how we understand earlier events. As with Tolkien's tendency to revise, we do have two versions in particular of Galadriel's actions at Alqualonde, the actions at the first Kinslayer as published in the Silmarillion. Today we will see Tolkien's first lady, the Lady of Light, the very light of Eru before us. Now before we continue with our Lady of Light, let's talk about today's sponsor, Wonder. Wonder is an AI art app that can turn your wildest words into fascinating works of art. It is such a simple app to use. Just enter your prompt, pick an art style, sit back and let Wonder do its thing. Just look at their demo, a monkey playing poker? No problem at all. Of course, here at The Broken Sword we love our artwork, and sometimes going down the route of AI can just make everything a whole lot simpler, more interesting, and even give you something that you may never have thought could exist before. Do you want some new Galadriel art? Why not? Something of Sauron? Sure. Hobbit holes? Well, I feel right at home now. Do you want to do something else that's fun too? Just add yourself to the app and see what wonders it can do with you too. It is just so much fun. Or maybe if you're stuck with ideas and you just want some help with some creativity, just click the I need inspiration button and see what awesomeness arrives in front of you. The premium version of the app is great too, having over 20 stars, faster queue times, unlimited art and no ads at all. So you can download the app now by following the link in the description below and get a free trial of the premium version. If you want to put your creativity to the test, there is no better way and no better time than now. Now, the most vocalized critique was that Galadriel wasn't Xena the warrior princess, and that by putting her in plate armor and strapping a broadsword to her back, somehow this was a slight to the character as constituted by Professor Tolkien. To be completely honest, upon his death, Tolkien appeared to be uncertain where Galadriel's place was to be, or where it might have been had he had one more day to edit and change and evolve his continuously growing and ever expanding legendarium. Christopher Tolkien has proven himself tireless in his continued efforts to bring more of his father's work to light, even in rough and unfinished form. I mean just look at the beginning of the history of Galadriel and Celeborn in the Unfinished Tales, as he begins with. There is no part of the history of Middle-earth more full of problems than of the story of Galadriel and Celeborn, and it must be admitted that there are severe inconsistencies embedded in the traditions. Or, to look at the matter from another point of view, that the role and importance of Galadriel only emerged slowly, and that her story underwent continual refashioning. Putting together a consistent story for Galadriel is tricky, as here we have something like Schrodinger's canon, that is, depending on whether or not you've observed it, it both is and isn't canon. Later publications that came about in the years after Professor Tolkien's death have done much to fill those gaps, but at what stage of completion they were in we can only guess, and to what extent it contradicts earlier publications is a real issue. If we go and look at one of Tolkien's letters dated March 6th, 1973, he begins by explaining Galadriel's name. Galadriel, like all the other names of elvish persons in the Lord of the Rings, is an invention of my own. It is in Sindarin form, see appendices E and F, and means maiden crowned with gleaming hair. It is secondary name given to her in her youth in the far past because she had long hair which glistened like gold and was also shot with silver. She was then of Amazon disposition and bound up her hair as a crown when taking part in athletic feats. 
Tolkien has always used the most flattering of terms in his descriptions. More than once, Tolkien refers to Galadriel as the most valiant and strong. Galadriel was part of the House of Finwë, with her parents being Finarfin and Eärwin, so really being from a mighty bloodline. And of being the greatest of the household of Finarfin, it is not difficult to understand why she would prove to still be important even at the end of the Third Age. Galadriel does wear her age well, and if you are curious, she is actually over 8,000 years old by the time she leaves Middle-earth after the War of the Ring. She also had the benefit of living during the time of the trees, being Calaquendi, which gives her an advantage over her kin who remained in Middle-earth as well and never made that great journey to a man. So although over 8,000 years old, she is still one of the most graceful to be in Middle-earth. Talking of which, another aspect of her great power comes from the time she spent living in the light of the two trees of Valinor. She was born during the years of the trees, an age before the first which comprised of many migrations and chiefly that of the sundering of the elves from the original clans of three who awoke in Quivianen. Of those, two groups would make it all the way to Valinor while the Teleri, sundered twice as it moved onward, would make it only with their number greatly diminished. This is why the Kinslain, which took place in the wake of Feanor's wrath and fiery heart that, once it was ablaze, few could change his course by reason and none by force. Galadriel's story is more spotty than that of Feanor's though, and we have bits and pieces here and there which add up to a confusing image. In some accountancy, Tolkien describes her as having Amazon disposition, as we said earlier, but it is her observation of the king's slaying of Aqualonde and the lessons learned from Feanor's many, often spectacular failures that play a bigger part in her character. It is important to note that in Middle-earth, possession is a dangerous thing, and to take hold of something priceless and to say, this is mine, I own it, betrays an ignorance of this world, a living world. Feanor was led astray by thinking that he could possess that light which gave the Silmarils their unrivaled brilliance and beauty. That light was of the trees, of the creation of Eru Iluvatar and its origin is in the song that wove into being the world and all things. To claim possession of the Silmarils, or even yet the Ring, is to think that power is the same as strength. The strength of arms is always a last resort, and Galadriel was wise enough to understand this. A big, big thing. From the flight of the Noldor, this takes place after the rebellion against the Valar that Galadriel very much took part in, despite there being no love lost between the two. But Finarfin spoke softly, as was his wont, and sought to calm the Noldor, persuading them to pause and ponder ere deeds were done that could not be undone, and Orodreth, alone of his sons, spoke in like manner. Finrod was with Turgon, his friend, but Galadriel, the only woman of the Noldor to stand that day, tall and valiant among the contending princes, was eager to be gone. No oath she swore. But the words of Feanor concerning Middle-earth had kindled in her heart, for she yearned to see the wide and guarded lands and to rule there a realm of her own will. Though the implication is there, the published The Silmarillion implies what Christopher Tolkien notes later, that being his suggestion that Galadriel may have aided Elwing's escape to the haven of Sirion with the Silmaril, yet she would be present at the ruin of Doriath. It is said in the Unfinished Tales, Galadriel and Celeborn participated in the fight for Eregion prior to its fall, and in their company was a great host to command. In the end though, Eregion was sacked, and this terrible conflict marked the beginning of the War of the Elves and Sauron, beginning in 1693 of the Second Age. Refugees like Galadriel and Celeborn found refuge first in Linden, then Lothlorien, a garden kingdom of her own to rule, something she had wished for so long and something she could now try. But what is important here, mind, is that Galadriel and Celeborn led the defence of Eregion, and we have no reason to doubt Galadriel's presence, nor Celeborn's, on the field of battle. An interesting note on Galadriel's age comes from a letter to his friend, Naomi Mitchison, who was at the time proofreading the first two volumes of The Lord of the Rings, and this comes in response to a number of questions that she had about the book. Galadriel is as old, or older, than Shelob. 
She is the last remaining of the great among the High Elves and awoke in Aldemar beyond the sea, long before Ungoliant came to Middle-earth and produced her broods there. Another interesting note comes with Galadriel's hair and her most famous relation, her uncle Feanor, whom she deeply despised. He had asked for a strand of her hair thrice, and thrice he was denied. As Galadriel's hair was said to shine with the light of the two trees of Valinor, and Feanor wanted that. Yet of course Gimli, the dwarf, son of Gloin, asked once and was given three during the Lord of the Rings. The Silmarils are burned with the light of the two trees and became famous for their beauty, the beauty that caused the wars and kin strife which followed in wake of their creation and the ensuing war of the jewels, which was a great turning point for the Alvin race as a whole the same beauty that could apparently come from the hair that sat on Galadriel's head. So that is to say, if Galadriel was so inclined, she could cause many a more war just by her beauty. Galadriel remained an important figure throughout her time, and she played an important role in the War of the Ring, calling the White Council for example, and it was her that wanted to put Gandalf as its head even though he would refuse, which is what saw Saruman take up that role. She would also lead her warriors into Mirkwood and, with the help of Nenya, the elven ring of power on her finger, she utterly raises Dol Guldur, ending the blight of shadow that had long infected the once great home of Greenwood the Great. If we step back for a moment here though at the end, in her youth Galadriel was an ambitious firebrand realistically an expected trait with her blood being that the same of Feanor's, if only by his youngest brother. She would seek her own realm to rule over, but her meeting with Melian would do much to change her, and that being for the better. There is nothing to suggest that she wouldn't be wielding a sword and engaged in battle, but there is little to actually show that. In one version of the Kinslain, she is not present, but in another, she takes up arms to defend her mother's kin. Either way, with her being six foot four tall and the mightiest elf to live in Arda since Feanor himself, according to Tolkien's own words, this set her apart as a massively powerful and wise character who deserves, and often demands, respect. What is most important in understanding her is to know that power is always somewhat of an illusion. It is borrowed, but strength is one's own. Her greatest feat of strength is the rejection of the One Ring as she has the strength of character to resist that kind of temporary, artificial power, but true temptation it is. So let's finish off with a quick quote from the Lord of the Rings of this event. And now at last it comes, you will give me the ring freely. In place of a dark lord, you will set up a queen, and I shall not be dark, but beautiful and terrible as the morning and the night. Fair as the sea and the sun and the snow upon the mountain, dreadful as the storm and the lightning, stronger than the foundations of the earth, all shall love me and despair. She lifted up her hand and from the ring that she wore there issued a great light that illuminated her alone and left all else dark. She stood before Frodo, seemingly now tall beyond measurement, and beautiful beyond enduring, terrible and worshipful. Then she let her hand fall, and the light faded, and suddenly she laughed again, and lo, she was shrunken, a slender elf woman, clad in simple white, whose gentle voice was soft and sad. I passed the test, she said. I will diminish and go into the west, and remain a Ladriel. So there we have it. The Lady Galadriel is no Xena warrior princess, but there is no reason to think that she would be unable to act in such a fashion if the needs arose. She has the strength of character to not rely on violence however, and is wise enough to know that all important difference, the difference between the strength of character and the temporary power conferred by the magic of the rings of power. All in all, Galadriel is a wondrous, beautiful being who was known as the mightiest, fairest, and greatest for good reason. She was never one to take all power herself, but she did wish to rule. She understood the beauty in the world and wanted to make sure that she could keep it the way it was. 
This is why Lothlorien was so important to her. It gave her her greatest wish. And really beyond that, she cared for little more. And this really shows us why Galadriel was one of the most powerful and greatest, yet fairest and most elegant beings to ever exist in Tolkien's world. With that now though, it is time for my question of the day, which is, do you think Galadriel was truly the greatest elf? Or does another deserve that title instead? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this in the comment section below. And now to shout out our patrons. You guys have been amazing in supporting our short film project. We are making great progress and I cannot thank you all enough. We have the Divine Power tier members of Kevin and Abram, the Fire Demon tier members of Nasheed, Denver, Steel and Gregory, and the Wizard Staff tier members of John, Andrew, Jennifer and Hunter too. You are all true legends of the Bro Hero. Finally, if you have managed to reach the very end of this video with me today and you enjoy what you see on the channel, then please hit that subscribe button with the bell icon too so that you can get notified when all of our future videos go up. And thanks again to Wonder for sponsoring today's video. Remember, you can download the app now by following the link in the description below and get your free trial of the premium version of the app. If you want to put your creativity to the test, there is no better time than now and no better place than Wonder. I hope you all have an amazing week and thank you again for just spending some of your time with me today and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword.